So I did an in-depth video last week about zero tier, how it works, and it's been pretty fascinating as I've dug into it and really got an understanding for the protocols and how it gets systems connected. And I wanted to clarify something. A few people had asked, like, what's the difference between zero tier and a VPN? And zero tier is a unique use case, but can do VPN-like functions. And I say VPN-like functions because it does support routing. It does support creating a bridged layer two interfaces. So it can be used as a VPN or to connect a remote branch network. So that is one of the use cases for it. But a lot of the basic use case makes it very handy for just getting servers connected. And we're just gonna talk about some of the ways it works. It's a little bit different. So with the VPN, you got your firewall, you got your main office uh, firewall. So the main office firewall, you set up the VPN generally as the receiver. It picks up the VPN. You have the routing tables of how to get to all the different devices and different networks on your network that you build. And then you have your either a VPN client loaded, let's say on a phone or on a laptop so people can get back into your network. And it's a direct connection that you own per se. You have a static IP address signed to the main office. And you could also maybe when you're connecting two branch offices together, you have the firewall configured to auto call the other firewall and take care of it. So there's nothing on the client side uh, network over here. It's just routed through the firewall and using standard routing protocols. And that's simple when you have one office. If you have a dozen offices, you then have to build a dozen VPNs with routing protocols. Cause let's say if you, if this was the use case, I should say that you needed servers at every location and you need to get to servers at all those locations that can be done. You just have to build back and forth routes between all of them. And this can be a little bit more complicated. And some of the solutions for that are like NPLS, where you create these private networks. That's where zero tier really shines as that use case. So obviously it's really simple from a home user standpoint of, I want just, or even a small dev team where you go, I have a zero tier client over here, zero tier client over here. I just need these two devices to talk to each other. Now, difference between VPN is you are routing through these zero tier servers. They refer to as the zero tier planet servers. And I go a little more in depth on how they work, but it's cloud redundant. Uh, these servers are scattered around quite a bit. Uh, so when, no matter where you are, internationally, nationally here in the US or in Europe or wherever, there's a zero tier server nearby to you. And if you don't want to relay things because this is an open source project and you don't want to use a zero tier servers, you could one, recompile it not to use a zero tier list or use a zero tier list and also have your own servers in between for relaying. That way, if for some reason, all the different nodes, which there's a lot of them for zero tier, were all to somehow magically fail, you would still have a way to get your device is connected because they route through here because the firewalls are unaware of each other. The clients don't have to be aware of what network they're on. They only have to have routable access to the zero tier planet servers. And from there, they'll figure out all the connections in between. So let me open up my little map real quick that I used in the last one. So, you know, here's the internet with the dispersed zero tier servers. Here's a firewall at the office. Here's a digital ocean server I did in my other demo, my firewall at home. And each of these has two IP addresses assigned to them because they use zero tier to get that network information over, but they're all on this 10147 network. Pretty straightforward. They all have an extra IP address assigned to them provided their main IP. So you do, instead of routing, all I'm doing is going to the IP address of the devices that I want to get to. So no matter where I move any of these devices, they're always going to have these zero tier addresses assigned. So I just go to that IP address. So this one is always going to be 10 more 10, 147, 18, 14. So I can always just go to that particular device whenever I need to. But I wanted to dig a little bit further. So this is like the overview and what makes it a little bit different from VPN. And obviously it's really convenient as a use case because if you have a file server in or even a gaming server, because I've seen a few people set up their servers this way, and you don't want to map any holes in your firewall. That's one of the huge differences. They're using UDP hole punching, but it took no configuration on my part to configure these firewalls. It just uses NAT traversal versus a VPN. I've got videos on how to set up like OpenVPN. You do have to open up ports and maintain the OpenVPN and configure it and write all the routes. That's not necessary when you're doing it here. So no matter where you move or even in the case of my phone, when it's just wandering around on the cell network, it completely works flawlessly and gets a connection on there. But I wanted to show the kind of connection that's actually happening. So I'm going to go ahead and I have it on my phone here. I'm going to tell it to 
log into something so I can create some connections and show you what it looks like in PFSense. Now, as I said, I've done no configuration on my PFSense boxes. The out of the box default PFSense or even other firewalls I've tested, I've taken my you know, phone other places with people who have consumer routers or just the one, the cable, one of my friends and scene of zero tier worked fine. My phone connected to my boxes that have zero tier anywhere I went. And it was actually really impressive. Um, and we mentioned on how they got hacked episodes, Xavier's been using it to connect to his home network and he feels comfortable with it after auditing the security himself, looking at it going, this is really nice. It does not uh, require him to open up any firewall parts at home at all to be able to get to his servers at home and in the cloud that he attached it to. He can lock them down so there's no external ports open and be able to jump in there. Let's show you what that looks like from like the PFSense side. So here are the two connections that we have. We have Debian at the office, which is sitting right here, and we have Tom's phone. And Tom's phone is running uh, an SSH client so it can log into this particular machine. Now you can see they're on two separate networks. You can't have the whole address, but 172.56, uh, that, who owns that real quick? Okay, T-Mobile, that's a T-Mobile IP block. So uh, 172.56.10.68 is the current public cellular address that my phone sees uh, or they that the device sees uh, connecting to you right now. So I'm on the T-Noble network. And by the way, uh, I'm going to do, when I do some of the tests here, uh, they're still reasonably fast, even though my phone only has a few bars, like the latency is really low. I'm browsing on my phone and connecting to here. And we'll show you what it looks like from here. So we're going to cap the auth log. And you can see that I'm logging in as session user Tom. Yeah, accepted password Tom right here from 147.17.135. Now, this is where it's really cool because it's the way Zero is working. It's just coming across on this private network with this secondary adapter. When we go here, change the screen size. Here is the IP address this has internal on the network, and here's the IP address it has right here. So all the traversals going through, not like a standard VPN, but like sideways, so to speak. It's just traversing the private network. It comes in, I logged in from my phone, even though my phone has a separate public IP address, I don't see it coming from there. I see it as coming from this local IP address there. Now, this is what it looks like from the PFSense firewall. I've blurred out my public IP address, but when I look at the connections, and what's going on in my firewall, and like I said, I've done nothing to this PFSense, there's no ports open for zero tier, it's just host 172.56.10.68, that T-Mobile address that's assigned to my cellular network. And you can see it's connecting to the internal 192 address in there. It comes through our 50 dot public IP address, then lands on the 192 address, and away we go. In fact, I can even, I pulled up a shell so it has a couple more connections in there that stay open. But this is what's really interesting like I said, it's very much like a VPN in terms of I still have that connectivity, but it's not like a VPN because I had to do no configuring in any of the firewalls and the clients didn't need any special configuring. You just load the zero tier client, add them to the network on there, and away you go. Now, the last thing I'll show you that I you know, want to dig into that I thought was really interesting, close this. And I decided to do a full packet capture in Wireshark for how it goes on there. So I want to see if I could see any information in here. So this is that internal IP address again. And unlike a traditional VPN, there's a couple ARP things in here you can ignore. This is the zero tier talking to my phone, that 172.56 network again. It sees nothing. It sees just some encrypted UDP. Uh, as I talked about before in my longer video, they're using encryption and, and top to bottom with all this. So, cause this all, you know, traverses the public net, but I did track, and these are the connections it does to the zero tier clients. Once again, all connected. The only thing they are able to see is that metadata going back and forth. But once it connects to the zero tier planet servers, it then brokered that connection to go through the UDP hole punch right here. And there's just no, it's all just no data in here. Uh, works exactly as expected uh, in terms of encryption. I tried decoding some of this. I wasn't able to get any information out. It's just all general chatter, but it's all encrypted going under. So still like a VPN, you're still using encrypted. Uh, and it does contact a handful of the servers for kind of for redundancy, which is really slick. And I did try a couple things like when you move networks, it establishes really quick. And that's part of the reason it connects to quite a few of them at once. And these are all the different 
I think I didn't like every one of these, but I know the 3.5 one and at least a handful of others are all these zero tier servers. So really clever the way this works. I'm still impressed with it. Even looking at Wireshark, I was not able to gleam any data out of a full packet capture. And I did this capture from startup. I did a startup packet capture. So uh, watching it walk through, talk to the firewall directly, and it goes through and sees what it can uh, gather back and forth, trying to get the session started. Okay, you know, it's trying to do NAT PMP. It's trying to get things opened up. Um, we don't have the automatic NAT traversal turned on. And with, if you're NAT PMP, you can look it up. It's it's the auto mapping. It's the uh, UPnP mapping. It actually, it makes the request for it, but my firewall has that turned off and uh, PFSense does by default out of the box. So it does try to open up a couple ports to make the uh, hole punch solid. But like I said, my firewall declines it, but it still works. So, and here's all the, you know, the little data going back and forth. So like I said, I'm uh, after a week of really digging in and uh, me and not just me, people way smarter than me have been digging into this protocol for a while. It's really impressive. It does work very similar to VPN. It does have the ability as a more advanced use case to create bridges and routing. Um, and I may stand up a server just for that to do some more testing because uh, it can do full layer two routing and you can build, bridge it into a switch and create two networks uh, where other devices don't need to be loaded in client, but they load across one client. Sounds a little complicated. They do have documentation on how to do it. And I may follow through and look at that. But for a use case of I need to connect my uh, couple boxes or something I have at home or a server I have loading zero tier on even a Windows computer and then being able to access the resources on there as if it's just another network adapter makes zero tier like a really simple way to just get connected and without the complexities of having to set up a VPN. And it's, you know, referred to as an SD-WAN solution because it is software defined uh, and you can software redefine it on the fly, which is really impressive. Like I said, watch my longer video on this uh, for more in depth of how to join and move networks. And of course, you know, RTFM, they have a ton of documentation uh, for being an open source project, which is great because it's nice when all these protocols aren't, you know, done in mystery. But I will at least comment on one thing. I know this will be a concern of some people, uh, Yes, you notice because it is your my box here is now reaching out and talking to all these zero tier servers and I did mention metadata. Zero tier will know all the devices you're connecting. So they're going to see my phone here at the 172T mobile address. They see this computer coming from my public 50.comcast address that we use here. So they do have that metadata, but they don't have the details. Maybe okay, they do have what you name the server and things you put into the zero tier software but they don't have any actual data traversal. So it's all metadata. So that could be marked as a disadvantage because if you want a VPN to be discreet, um, but then again, is it really discreet because all the hops you go through still see the two endpoints connecting to each other. So once again, metadata has been collected. They know that this firewall and this firewall has a VPN client between it. Granted, you're just adding zero tier into the list of people that know you're making TCP IP connections, but there's not much of a way to really avoid that. At some point, someone's going to know you're making uh, TCP IP connections across the internet and they could piece together some of the devices. So if that's a concern of yours, um, knowing the public, you know, having zero tier know the public IP addresses of where all your devices are connecting from, um, well, then maybe don't use it. But you probably, if you have a nation state level looking at that kind of stuff, um, you may really want to dig further into how you how you're doing things and also probably don't do anything illegal because it's a bad idea. But nonetheless, uh, that is at least one thing I'll throw if you're doing a VPN versus zero tier, that is a difference. They do have that metadata, but like I said, this is all encrypted and they have nothing else. All right, go ahead, give zero tier a try if you're interested in it. Like I said, it doesn't cost anything to sign up on their website and uh, start building these software defined networks. It's a slick system. And if you want to go and use it professionally, they do have uh, paid support packages and tickets and uh, can confirm from friends I've talked to, their, their dev team is responsive. If you have questions uh, or concerns or need help standing up a network in a commercial environment, they do offer that paid support for it. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. 
Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.